Hello and welcome back to the Forts Pro League, where here we have on the left-hand side, it is Team Eagle Die. Facing off against their opponents, it is Cattershot. Well, let's go ahead and introduce our teams. It's Firework and Alex D, playing as the Eagle Die and playing as the Pinch Fist Commander. It's Pinch Fist, very well known for the greedy strats. Mostly because Pinch Fist's strongest passive ability is its full cell value trait. That is to say, every single piece of your base that you sell, be it a structure, a piece of armor, or any device or weapon within it, regains you the full buy price of that material. That means that all of the starting metal, anything extraneous can be sold off just to give you a little extra reserve at the beginning of the match. And it makes for, well, builds and strategies that revolve around building very quickly and selling off most of your forts in between it. And they're facing off against their opponents going for a somewhat different strategy. Team Cattershots, Alessio and Fluffages here, are playing as the Armadillo Commander. Now, Armadillo, with its recent buffs, now has these very fast opening doors, which make for some... It makes for some interesting plays. It, I don't know truly how much of an effect it has, and that, is, and that it is incredibly difficult to quantify how much of an effect that the rapid closing doors has. Um, but it does enable for some extra cheeky sniper plays, um, some extra safe weapons behind those sweet metal doors. And considering that Armadillo already gets cheaper metal and builds faster, uh, we, we are going to see some general passive benefits out of, out of Armadillo. Like Armadillo doesn't do anything particularly well, but with the fundamental upgrades to the metal and their doors, it's just a good all-round commander that has worked pretty well. We're going to see those fast metal doors here with this EMP coming out of Cattershot. Uh, specifically, Fluffages in the top base is looking to do the EMP harass, and we have seen this time and time and time again. It is just a good strategy to slow down their opponents, however... The EMP has not yet fired, and as we've seen, well, Team Eagle Die already has their heavy weapons placed as the howitzer is about 25% of the way complete, so it's kind of too late to slow them down with an EMP. Now, I do want to point out that some of the reason for the hesitation for the EMP is that there is a sniper already on the field, as you guys may know. The EMP is particularly vulnerable to sniping, and yes, Team Cattershot does have the, the fast doors. Um, snipers, snipers can punish quite hard. And they, the bullets fly quickly and far faster than doors can open. So here I'm presuming that he's going to sell it out. No, nope, he's opening up the door to, or opening up the wood to potentially fire that. But hasn't fired so yet, so I suspect that's going to be used a little bit later. Now. There is an interesting difference in the strategies here. Both players on Team Cattershot are going for the upgrade sensor and upgraded mines. This does mean that it will slow down their heavy weapon timings, as you notice. Because they have spent money on upgrading their mines and additional technology, Team Cattershot does not yet have a heavy weapon placed of any kind. As it stands, they pose no real threat to Team Eagle Die. My Team Eagle Die can just survive indefinitely. Now, they may have to suffer some EMPs and sniper shots and will be slowed down, but nothing that's actually going to break through their base and threaten to cost Eagle Die the game. So, this is not terribly uncommon for Armadillo players, where Armadillo players will attempt to utilize their cheap armor to outlast their opponents and simply defend cost efficiently while they get a strong economy and out eco their opponents in the later game by virtue of having just twice as much income as the other team uh, we do see a cannon about a third of the way completed at this point in time but can they survive no
Hey guys, the Forts Pro League is happening right now, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss your favorite team. And we're off to rounds two, ladies and gentlemen, here on the left hand side, it is Team Cattershot playing once more as the Armadillo Commander. We can expect some particularly efficient defenses out of this, you know, assuming they survive the opening volley. And on the other side, it is Team Eagle Die playing as the Seep Commander. Well, I was about to say it's gonna be a wild surprise when Team Cattershot figures out what's going on here, but it looks like Team Eagle Die is not even trying to hide it a little bit, which is par for the course for Seep, as Seep specializes in one thing and one thing only, and it's missiles. We'll get to see here in a moment this workshop sold off and replaced with an upgrade center so we can go on to nukes. Once these nukes come out, it could be potentially game over for Armadillo as nukes. Well, they do a lot of damage. And let's see, it looks like their teammate Alex down here is going to be going with the laser beam support option. Good for the more later game transition as opposed to just sticking with the flak and missiles like rockets to gain map control. I'm partial toward the flak and rocket style support because it enables the uh, much stronger pressure in the early game where the uh, nukes are the premium weapon. You can knock out their opponents before their opponents can really get things going as Cattershot is likely to be looking to eco up defend themselves and work their way in a work their way toward heavy weapons in a rather slow and deliberate manner slow is a, not the right word for it a, a deliberate and purposeful manner however they will have to defend themselves against these missiles we're just gonna, going to start coming quite rapidly as we already have two launches and we're going to see these upgraded to nukes once this upgrade sensor completes now as you notice uh, the bases for team Cattershot are nice and thick and tanky and there's already an EMP on the way. Okay, so it looks like while Alex is getting the... While Alex here in the lower base is getting the laser production facility, they are using EMPs at least to attempt to clear the area and let those missiles do their damage. Just a little extra map control. But as I was saying, the bases for Team Eagle Die on the right side are quite thin. They are flimsy, frail, and not at all defended against heavy weapons, as they're looking to end the game before those heavy weapons come out, or at least deal so much damage that the game is effectively won by virtue of being so far ahead of their opponents that they don't have to be so concerned about heavy weapons. And they could eventually armor themselves up as they see fit, but for now, they're looking to do as much damage as they can, as we have the first nuclear weapon, about a quarter of the way completed. There's only another minute left on that before the damage ramps to disgusting. So we have an AP sniper coming out of firework. Oh no. Well, that's, that's going to make their lives more complicated. We see these terribly fast doors coming out of Cattershot, keeping it nice and safe. Look at how fast the speedy door is. It's so fast. The door doesn't protect it at all against the AP sniper. And there it goes. So no more sniping out of Team Cattershot as the AP Sniper has, well, taken over. Oh, did you find a new target? May have found a new target. Uh, it looks like that machine gun is too deep in there for the AP Sniper to reach. Uh, perhaps this sniper here, but we will find out. It looks like Cattershot is investing in some AA of their own, which is a wise decision because they they are well aware that there's some heavy missiles on their way, or at least soon to be, as this nuke is finishing up momentarily. At this point, Team Eagle Die is aware that it's about time for Canada Clock, so they have added any amount of defenses on the front of their base, enabling them to survive at least the first shot of a heavy weapon, although unknown to them, Team Cattershot hasn't even placed a heavy weapon yet. Speaking of which, there goes a howitzer right now. That'll be another minute or so before that comes online, but the nukes are ready to go. And there's communicating in chat to each other saying that oh, it is about time to launch. They're going to request that the EMP fires first to bait some of that AA. 
There it is. Fire beam support. New clans. Howitzer, not quite exposed. It actually survives that. Looks like Alessio's core here took a, a small amount of splash damage. Down to 96% integrity. This is where things get particularly rough for Catashot. While they are playing Armadillo, which is top tier for defenses, they do still have to defend themselves against the Warheads. And the Warheads are extremely dangerous. There is no true and proper defense against a Warhead. It can just kind of win the game. Once it goes drunk, there is no guarantee about where it goes. It can absolutely miss the base entirely. It come back around, do a full 180 and slap the core in the back, which is... You can't really defend against that reliably. You just cannot defend against every potential direction the nuke can come from. As much as we do see... Well, they're relying on hard walls more than AA in order to shut down the nuke, in part because they don't have much of a choice due to having ostensibly lost map control to Team Eagle Die's aggressive posturing, and in part because uh, there is no more stable defense than just taking the nuke directly and repairing the damage afterward. And you know, Armadillo's great at that. Not so great at taking laser beams to the foundation, as we have another player knocked down. Well, unfortunately, it's down to Fluffages in a 1v2. Fluffages Howitzer is about to come online, will likely get off a shot, but will it be enough? Without a follow-up, without a, without a secondary weapon, the Howitzer tends to not do much on its own. The Howitzer, while it does incredible amounts of damage, does not penetrate deeply. It splashes its damage all over the place and is typically paired with a more penetrated weapon, such as a laser or a second cannon. So, Well, I didn't expect that. And just like that, Team Eagle Die takes the win in this series. So make sure to check back, because we've got more series coming soon. But for now, have a good one, everyone. And I'll see you guys later.